Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be taking a look at just some of the lovely, fantabulous games that are coming to the Nintendo Switch in the month of May. As always, this is by no means a complete list of all the games coming to the Switch in May, because a lot of them haven't, won't have even been announced yet. These are just the ones that caught our eye and made us go, ooh. We've also got a couple of double-ups this time, because there's a couple of simultaneous releases it, you, it, it'll make sense we'll we'll get to it but anyway that's more than enough waffling let's dive right into things starting things off on the 4th of may we have the colonists which is a real-time management sim with robots i'm a big fan of management sims you know like roller coaster tycoon uh, two-point hospital that sort of thing and this i'm looking at it it is actually starting to tickle that area of course the proof of the pudding will be in the eating you know these games you can never be too sure until you actually get your hands on them or indeed you know you hear a review but the fact that the game isn't out yet means that we can only speculate. But yeah, how it looks at the moment, I'm really quite interested in it. I like the little aesthetic with the robots and everything, and I, I again, I just really like this style of game. So this has definitely caught my attention. The only thing I am a little bit concerned about is the performance. It does look like it chugs a little bit, but we don't know quite how old this build of the game is that we're seeing here. So who knows? One perhaps to keep a cautious eye out for if you're like me. The next day, on the 5th of May, we have Dull Grey. <laughs> that rhymed a lot more than I expected. This is an interactive visual novel focusing on a single initial choice. Uh, I don't really know too much about it. Because it's a novel, I don't want to look too far into like the fine details of how it works. But it looks like it's got quite a moody atmosphere, and it's all about finding happiness amongst the monotony. And my god, the visuals are just gorgeous. It's entirely narrative-driven. It supposedly has a very moving plot which is something that i'm i'm really into personally it's not going to be for everyone by any means but it's also a bargain at this much money to me it looks like a simple game with an awful lot of heart and that's something i can get behind on the 7th of May, we have Flowing Lights, which is an arcade shmup or a shoot 'em up if you're a fan of syllables. And when I first saw this, I thought it looked a little bit unremarkable. Not bad, just unremarkable. And then I realized the way that the landscape is affecting the way that the shots move. And that that's a really interesting idea. I don't know whether it's been done in the past. Um, maybe with, I seem to remember something like it was, it was featured in like the PC version of Centipede. You know, like the, the reboot? Maybe, but that's where the entire focus of the game is. And as a result, it means that it's not only kind of like an action shmup, but there's also like a flavor of puzzle mechanics as well. When, you know, sort of how are you going to take out this enemy and you can see where your, your shots are going to arc and things like that. And how are you going to avoid things? It just looks really original, really unique. <laughs> Then on the 14th of May, we've got a double bubble. Yes, we've got Famicom Detective Club The Girl Who Stands Behind and Famicom Detective Club The Missing Heir. Unsurprisingly, these are both ports of Famicom games. <laughs> they came out of nowhere as well. Nintendo announced them during a direct, and it's got quite a lot of people interested. It's essentially sort of like a, a classic detective-style visual novel. It's been updated with new shiny graphics and everything, and, you know, it's two separate games, or I think you can buy both of them as well if you like. Well, of course you can. I'm not going to dwell too much on this because we've already got a preview up by the lovely Zeon and John, and they've actually played the game, unlike me. So <laughs> they're far more qualified to chat about it. Click the link in the video description to watch all that, but maybe wait until after you've watched this one. Yeah, cheers. On the very same 14th of May, we've got another double bubble. We've got Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero. The original Subnautica has been around for a while now, but it's finally being released on Switch, and the sequel, Below Zero, is coming out on exactly the same day, so double Subnautica. Both games are open-world crafting survival games, and whilst the original was by no means the first game in this genre, it really helped to popularize it. Like, this is a hugely, hugely successful game on other platforms. I've not actually played Subnautica myself, but I've seen plenty of people talking about it, and <laughs> I've always been tempted. I've always been tempted, but it's never been on a, like, a convenient platform for me, which is a terrible excuse, but I've got enough other games to play. Contrary to that, I'm probably gonna get this because it looks like my cup of tea, all right? 
Jumping forth a week to the 21st of May, we have Miitopia, the 3DS game brought over to the Switch for some reason. If you can't already tell, this is a me-based game with a very whimsical and sort of like fantasy setting, with a lot of humor injected in there as well. It's, it does not take itself seriously in the slightest, and really revels in the fact that it's using your friends and the people that you actually know, maybe even enemies, it depends on who you want to put in the game, in order to tell a story. But the story really isn't the focus, it's all about the interaction interactions between different characters, and very much like things like Tomodachi Life, it's the fact that it's people that you know that makes it all the sweeter. The price does smack a little bit of too much in my view, but if you've never played the game before and you're really interested in it, it is quite a substantial game, but again, I don't know, you know, sort of, I'm, I'm pleased it's coming over, I mean I still don't understand why it's coming over, I'm pleased it's happening, but at the same time, mm, that price is a little bit difficult to swallow. On the very same 21st of May, we have Knockout City, which is an online dodgeball multiplayer game, which, yeah, it reminds me of Splatoon as well. Xeon's already had a pop of the PC version of this game, and he really enjoyed it. I'm very keen to see where they take it, because it very much like Splatoon, it looks like one of those games that's very quick to pick up, but has quite a high skill ceiling. And it's actually been developed by an indie company. I mean, it's being published by EA. I don't quite know whether that makes the development company indie still. But I think it's got promise. It's going to be interesting to see whether that promise is actually justified. We will have to wait and see, but for the time being, it looks fairly good. Three days later on the 24th of May, we've got Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster, which is a long-named game. <laughs> <laughs> That's no mistake. From the title, you've probably gathered that this is the third game in the Shin Megami Tensei series. And yes, don't worry, this new version also features Dante from the Devil May Cry series. A classic PS2 RPG finally being re-released over here. It was re-released last year, this exact version in fact, in 2020 in Japan, but it's finally coming over to the West. If you've ever played and enjoyed any of the Persona series, you'll be, well, maybe not surprised to hear that you'll enjoy this as well, because... It's, um, it, well, it's the same series, sort of. And who knows, maybe if you buy this, they'll let us know what's happening with Shin Megami Tensei 5 just a little bit sooner. Although, probably not. The next day, the 25th of May, it's Maneater. <laughs> Chomp. This game came out last year, in fact, almost exactly a year before this version is due to release, which is kind of bizarre. And you play as a shark. Yes, you play as a shark and you've got to evolve and eat humans and things like that. You basically have got to be what everyone thinks sharks are but generally, in reality, sharks aren't. It does look really good fun, though. I don't know how much staying power it's going to have, but, you know, given the kind of sort of semi arcade nature, it feels like it's very at home on the Switch. Considering it came out at the end of the life of the PS4 and the Xbox One, I'm kind of keen to see how it runs on the Switch. I'm a little bit nervous, but at the same time, we've seen plenty of fantastic ports like Doom Eternal, so who knows? I'm probably worrying over nothing. <laughs> And then on the 28th of May, we have World's End Club, which originally came out on Apple Arcade, if you can believe it, and now it's coming to Switch. Maybe it didn't sell very well on that, who knows? <laughs> this is a collaborative effort between the creators of the Zero Escape and Danganronpa series, and apparently that's a really good thing, but I don't know. I've had to converse with John for this because I am completely out of the loop with this. You're part of a group of school children going on a school trip who then get trapped and forced into kind of like a death club, which is <laughs> it's weirdly dark, but I imagine it's it's got to be relatively, relatively jocular. I mean, look at it. As you might have guessed, this isn't exactly my cup of tea. This, this isn't really appealing to me, but I'm only one man. And so I spoke to John and he's assured me that he thinks it looks neat and I'm not about to argue with Mr. John. So if it looks like your kind of thing, keep an eye out for it. It's coming this month, baby. And there you have it. Just a small sliver of the deliciousness that can be expected from the giant cake that is the Switch in May. Did we miss out one of your favorites or did we introduce you to something brand spanking new that you'd never even heard of with your little ear? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you detect to see whether you can find where that subscribe button is and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye bye. Oh, what?